Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome to my shop. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made these really cool gooseneck moldings. So let's get started. So to get started, I made some templates of the actual scroll board that I'm trying to make a molding for. And what we're trying to get to is a piece of stock that starts down here and it continues up this way so you can route a molding into it. In my case, I want to make my moldings two and three quarter inches thick. So this line here is two and three quarter inches down from the top of the scroll board. And to get to this line here, we're going to use a wheel kind of drawing jig to draw this line onto another template. So the first thing I want to do is create a negative template of the positive template here. And that's this one here. They nest together fairly well. It's close enough for my purposes here. But that allows you to have a reference edge that you can then reference something down this way onto. So the next thing you'll do is you'll take your um, it'll a wheel. The wheel needs to be the radius of the thickness of the molding that you want to make. And then you can run it along your negative profile, tracing out a new arc, which will be the correct offset for your new molding. So this is the template that I'm going to use to create the stock for the right molding. I'll do exactly the same thing for the left molding as well. One thing I mentioned about the video footage you're about to see is the first time I did this, I did it incorrectly. I made my template for the molding based off of the positive template instead of the negative template. So that gave me a molding that was the wrong uh, curvature for my case. So I just wanted to point that out because you'll probably see in the video the, the uh, curvature of the molding change from kind of clip to clip. The process is the same, but the profile that I was cutting or the curvature I was cutting was incorrect, that's all. Once my templates are made, I can trace the profile onto my stock and cut them out at the bandsaw. Next, I'll use carpet tape to stick the template to the stock and use my router to flush it up. I start by using a pattern bit and then I remove the template and make another pass just to get a little more depth. Next, I'll flip the stock over and use a flush trim bit to remove the last bit of the waste. Since I don't have a bearing guided router bit for this profile, I need to use a jig with a following finger to route the profile with a combination of router bits. The idea with this jig is you need to keep the follower perpendicular to the curve in order to get a consistent profile along the length of the molding. To start routing the profile, I began by using a spiral bit to remove the majority of the waste. You could also do this on the bandsaw with the table tilted, but the router has a low risk of messing something up. <laughs> At least I think so. Once the bulk of the waste is removed, I switched to a 1.5 inch diameter round nose bit and started working on the two coves. The smaller cove I was able to make with this bit, but the larger cove required multiple passes to approximate the curve. To reach all the way to the bottom of the profile, I added a collet extension to my router. This gave me a couple extra inches of reach. Once I had the routing on the large cove complete, I switched back to the spiral bit to make the fillets along the bottom of the molding. The last part of the profile I made was the round over at the top. This would need to be made with an oval bit. Since I didn't have one, I just ground the post off of a regular roundover bit that I had two of the same size of. And that worked great. Now it's time to cut the molding away from the blank. I use a compass to make a few reference marks and then use my negative scroll board template to draw the cut line. I also checked the cut line with my positive template just to be safe I didn't use the wrong template to draw the line. <laughs> At the bandsaw, I cut along the line to release the molding from the blank. I really took my time here to be sure that I did not cross my cut line. Next, I use my spindle sander to start cleaning up the cut. Now the moment of truth. Now I'll mark the left and the right lengths for the miter cuts. I'll draw the miter lines on for reference so I don't cut them in the wrong direction and so I know how much of the molding will be in the final piece so I only clean up the areas that I need to. 
Since I used the cove bit to approximate the large cove, I'll blend all the coves together with a gooseneck scraper. And then I can start hand sanding the entire profile. Next I'll start working on cleaning up the stepped portion. There was a little bit of material that I needed to remove and that was easy to do with the chisel. And then some more sanding. Next I can cut the miters. I made a tall fence for my miter saw out of a scrap piece of plywood and made a cut on it at 45 degrees. I apply a couple pieces of carpet tape to the gooseneck. Line the cut on the plywood up with the cut line on the gooseneck, and then stick it down. Now I can take the whole assembly to the miter saw and make the miter cut. I started out with the cut being about an eighth of an inch too long, and then gradually snuck up on the perfect cut. Next I'll start working on the short top returns. I want to attach these before gluing the goosenecks to the case. I added a domino here to help strengthen this joint since this area of the gooseneck will not be glued to the case. Now I can glue the miter together. On miter joints, I like to apply glue and then let them sit for a few minutes to allow the wood to soak up the glue. Then I'll reapply glue to the joint and connect them together. I didn't have a good way to clamp this, so I just held it together until the glue grabbed. Now I'll finish cleaning up the top of the molding. Before gluing the molding to the case, I cut a glue well along the bottom edge to keep glue from squeezing out onto the scroll board. Now it's time to glue the gooseneck to the scroll board. I apply glue to the first few inches of the molding and place the molding on the case. I get it into the correct position and leave it to dry. Once the glue is dry, I'll secure the top of the molding to the scroll board with a screw in a vertically elongated hole. This allows the scroll board to expand and contract behind the molding. Next I can work on the side returns. The profiles of the gooseneck and the side moldings differed a little. So as I was cleaning up the side molding, I adjusted its profile to match the gooseneck. The line on the end of the molding here is the profile of the gooseneck at the miter. So the side returns are attached in a similar fashion as the gooseneck moldings themselves. They get 3 inches or so of glue on the front corner and then they are attached in the rear with a screw and elongated hole, this time horizontally to allow the case side to expand and contract in this direction. Now this whole process, including that jig, come out of this book here, Building Period Furniture by Glenn Huey. Now I was also fortunate enough to see Glenn demonstrate this jig and this whole process at Woodworking in America in 2014, and that was a really cool experience as well. Now this process does take a lot of time, it really does, but I think the results are really worth it. The, there's just something so um, dramatic about these moldings and it's totally worth it. Just to give you an idea of the time commitment, it took me about four hours to do all of the routing and it took me about an hour and a half or so to clean up each of the moldings before getting ready to attach to the case. So it is a pretty lengthy investment, so if you do want to do this at least probably more than once or twice, I'd say it would be in your best interest <laughs> to get a set of um, custom made router bits to match this profile that you're trying to get to because it's going to save you a ton, a ton of time. So thank you as always for watching, I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments about anything I showed today with the gooseneck moldings or anything here in my shop, please feel free to leave me a comment. As always, I appreciate those and I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time.